Hello everyone, welcome to ECCI Kids. Today we have a packed video for you today. And so today we're gonna to be focusing on the heart eyes emoji. So first up, we're gonna have the craft activity. So get creative and design your best heart eye emoji. Hello everyone. And for today's craft, we're gonna be making the heart eye emoji. So you're going to need a paper plate. If you don't have that, you can use card or paper. Um, you're going to need a magazine or a newspaper to rip up little coloured pieces or you could use coloured paper if you have that. Um, you will need glue and you will need scissors. If you don't have anything to rip up you can paint. Okay we're going to start by cutting the edge, the, um, the outside part of the plate off. Um, if you're using paper or card just cut a circle. Once you've done that, you want to draw on the eyes, which are the hearts, and then you want to draw a small semicircle for the mouth. Now, it doesn't matter what colours you use, um, obviously the emoji is yellow and red, so that's what I've used, um, but you can use anything. You want to go grab your magazines, your newspapers, and you want to get the colours that you want to use for your emoji. You can use anything you want, get creative, go crazy with it. Now when you're sticking the pieces on, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why we're doing a collage. Make sure to fill your gaps and then once you've done, you could stick it up somewhere. And yeah, there's your emoji. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So now we're going to move on to the object lesson. So make sure you're paying attention. Hey everyone, my name is Emmanuel and I have the privilege of sharing today's object lesson with you. And I thought I'll bring some stuff that are really important to me and they are my family photos. So here's a picture of my family when we were all younger. This is my mum, this is my sister Victoria, this here is my brother Matthew and this baby here is my brother George. But when I was younger, I used to argue with my brother and tell him that this was me and he's lying. He's not part of our family, that this baby was me then i got old and i realized that it was defo my brother george it wasn't me but it's a picture of me when i was younger you can see it's bigger than that picture because i'm the special one in the family obviously but <laughs> no nah, i'm joking but obviously i love my family i love pictures because pictures help you to remember things that happened when you get down the line and you realize wow i can't believe that happened such a long time ago but a picture is a great way of capturing something and it helps you to remember just simpler times um if i was to have a guess i would suspect that most people that are watching this right now have pictures all over their house of different family members could be their nan and granddad their mum and dad when they were younger their brothers and sisters cousins aunties uncles so many different family members families are a blessing from god and I think today will be a great time to, one, pray for our families and two, also thank God for the family that he has put us in. We're all so different and we have so many different family members, so many different characters to these family members, but they are all a blessing from God. So let's thank God for our family, but also don't forget to tell your family members that you love them. Thank you so much for listening to my object lesson, guys. From me and my family, take care. Fantastic. Now we're going to move on to worship, so get your singing voices ready. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than. Hallelujah 
Well done, guys. Now I'm going to need you to pay close attention because up next is the bridge. Welcome to ECCI Kids and a happy new year. Well, I, I haven't seen you since the beginning of the year, so it's the first time I'm going to be saying to you Happy New Year, isn't it? You can say it back to me. Oh, don't worry about it, don't worry. <laughs> anyway, emojis. Good way to communicate, you think? You can say lots of things with it. If you've got a space like mine. You could be saying a lot of things. But emojis, because you can't put my face on your camera to do things, can say things just as well. So, for imagine, if you had an emoji with tears, what do you think that means? I'm crying? I'm sad? Or I'm laughing so much that I'm crying? Could be in any one of those things, really. But what about... Red face with mean eyes. Yeah, I know, mine wasn't as good as the emojis, really. I, okay, I, I accept that. But what does that mean? What about then? Something maybe not so difficult to interpret. A smiley face. A smiley face. What about that then? If you're sending a smiley face, what are you saying to somebody? What was I just saying to you? <laughs> but here's one. That maybe you use, because I certainly do use this one, is heart eyes. Does heart eyes say to you, I love you, care for you, I like you? Something like that. Could be saying any one of those things. Here's somewhere where you can say, I love you, and perhaps you should be, very often, is family. Now, whether that family is your mum and your dad, or a carer, your brother, your sisters, grandma, whoever it is, hopefully, they, you love them. I'm going to tell a story of a young man who expresses love for his family but you might think well perhaps he's got good reasons to not show love so he could show a few emojis through his time of life and this man is Joseph we read about Joseph in the book of Genesis in the Bible and particularly the section that we're interested in today is Genesis 45 verses 1 to 15 she then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everybody leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him, because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come, close to me. And when they had done so, he, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed, and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the first five years, there will be no ploughing and no reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant, or a small part, on earth to save your lives by great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father. And say to him, this is what your son, Joseph, says. Go. God has made me Lord of all the Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. Don't delay. You should live in the region of Goshen and be near to me. You, your children and your grandchildren 
your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves. And and so can my brother J, uh, Joe, sorry, <laughs> so you can so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honour accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here to me. Then he threw his arms around his brother Jacob and wept. And Jacob embraced him weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. So imagine that. Joseph, one of 12 brothers, sold to Egypt. And there in Egypt, he went to the household of a man named Potiphar. Potiphar then, or at least his wife, accused him of doing something he never did. And he was put into jail. So, slave and then jail. That might give somebody good reason not to like members of your family. But as it turned out, in the jail, he got to talk to two guys interpreted their dream and one of them told the king that there's somebody who can interpret your dream and because of that he told them about the famine they was going to have and remember in the story in the part that we've just read it talked about there'd been two years of famine but before those two years there'd been seven years of feast lots of food and now there's going to be seven years of famine and when his brothers came there, it was two years left. But Joseph wasn't mad because he was a slave. Joseph wasn't angry because his brothers had done this bad thing to him. Joseph said, it was God who sent me here. Not to blame God, but to say that actually God had a good plan in order. Working through the family... He sent me down here so that I could actually save your life and the lives of your children and their children. Because this famine, it's only two years gone now. There's still another five years to come. So imagine that now. Yes, families are not always perfect. Bad things happen in families. I'll give you an example. I know a person... Who, when he was younger, dropped a wooden bench on his brother's toe and broke his foot. Accidentally, my, let me get that one in there, accidentally. Or another time, when this same person annoyed his sister so much that she got mad and picked up the nearest thing to her and threw at him. That nearest thing happened to be a scissors. If you've ever seen The Matrix, you, you know what the action is after that. Joking aside, yes, things happen in families. Sometimes families are not always perfect, just like Joseph's family isn't perfect. Things can happen where members of your family, your brothers or your sisters, may not like you but whatever it is just like Joseph families can come back to Joseph's family things can come back together and work out because when it comes down to it God has placed us in families because families help us to grow families help us to develop families help us to grow up and when time goes on and you want to share memories, you can share memories about things that happen in your family. For example, I can remember my dad taking me as a youngster to the house that they bought in Hackney at my mother's request. And I'm walking with my dad and I was so glad that my dad took me out somewhere and it was just me and him. And I saw a building across the way and it said, oh, 
Dad, that school, I want to go to that school. <laughs> and I did go to that school, but it was just across the road from where we lived. So <laughs> that was always going to be ha happening, wasn't it? But that, those are the things in family that you can lean on. Things that you can remember, particularly in these hard times where maybe you haven't seen your friends. You can still reminisce, think about things that have happened in your school. Do you remember when so-and-so did so-and-so? And laugh about it. But you can do that with your family. Hi, my name is Leah and I will be praying for families. Heavenly Father, please bless our families with your love and protect them from harm. Give them grace to forgive strength to overcome the difficulties they face and keep them together. I pray they will remember you are their comforter, provider, healer, and you promise you will never leave or forsake them because you love them. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, that's all for you have for today. Thank you for joining ECCI Kids. I hope you have a great week and take care.